Hello. We've been working on a V2000 format, uh, VR2324 Philips video recorder. And it has, after several previous faults, come down to having a defect in the DTF, dynamic track following. It also has a color fault, but one thing at a time. So let's see if we can sort out this uh, track following problem. It can be caused, I believe, by poor contacts in uh, a set of uh, brushes which contact the uh, top of the head drum. I've never worked on that aspect of this model of machine before, so uh, let's uh, take it apart and see what there is. Here's the top of the uh, deck, which has had the screening cans removed. And I believe this component here is called the bridge, and it needs to be unscrewed and taken off, and there's some contacts under here. so. Uh, Let's set you up so you can look down on it while I work on that. Right, this is the deck dropped into the uh, base of the machine, but I think we have enough room that I can take this deck out and put it down beside the machine. Okay, so the main machine is here, cabling is here, that's the front of the, the deck where the cassette goes in there, and this is, I believe, the bridge. There's a Torx screw here, but it also has a slot in it, so I can take that off with a normal screwdriver. Let's release some of this cabling. Under this cabling is another screw. So here we have a set of slip rings, and here a set of contacts which brush against those. I suspect they are all quite clean enough but we will clean them just to be on the safe side. I'll use isopropyl alcohol. Um, I saw on one of the original comments for this uh, way back in the 80s that you should use Freon but of course uh, let's uh, save the ozone layer and not do that. I am intrigued as to how clean this is and I wonder if we might be able to see in a little bit more detail under a microscope, uh, whether there are any marks on that. Well, somewhat to my surprise, there definitely are some marks visible on the top slip ring plate here. It's definitely worth cleaning them up. And let's look at the wipers themselves. Oh yes, definitely, definitely worth cleaning. Yeah, those wipers are, are pretty grubby actually, definitely worth cleaning. Right, um, <laughs> I, I, I suspect that might have been the cause of the problem. It really looks quite grim. So let's clean that up. Looking on this one, for example, here, it's got a black um, oxide, it looks like, on top of the contact, and it clearly would not make electrical connect connection through that. I've just done some tests to check that you can make electrical contact even through these slightly more scratch things. So where those scratches are, it optically looks through the microscope uh, as though it might not make contact. But with a multimeter, it's easy to make contact through those parts. So they're not as bad as they look. Right, I think I can uh, refit the bridge and put all this wiring back into place and test it. I think that uh, refitting it actually would be easier with the uh, machine in eject position, so I'll do that. Right, now that's basically in place, I'll get the cassette carriage down again then fit the screws, then put all the wiring back. Okay, we're ready to uh, try it with the cleaned slip rings. Try play.
Alas, no, it still sounds like the uh, capstan is hunting and DTF is not working. Well, we're going to have to go a bit deeper into the DTF circuits. Uh, unfortunately, now we've got a head clog, so uh, I'll just have to clear that first. Okay, I've cleared the uh, head clog again, so we're back to having uh, tracking and dynamic track following problems, and also no colour, which is likely another fault again. Let's press stop once to stop the tape, and again to do unlace. Oh, this video recorder. What are you doing? Oh, hi Alex. I've been working on this Philips V2000 video recorder for weeks now. I keep fixing something and then something else is wrong. And I'm completely bogged down now in the uh, dynamic track following circuit. I just don't know what to do. I know what you should do. Oh yeah? Just get good. Oh, thanks. Okay, well maybe that's inspired me because I now have the service manual in English. Well, mostly English. So let's go through the service manual where it refers to the DTF circuits. You gonna help me, Alex? No. Oh, all right. Catch you later. Looking in detail at the service manual, it tells us that there's an FM2 signal uh, and there's a, a, a signal that comes from, well, a DAC actually elsewhere, and they are mixed together. And it's this FM2 signal we really need to take a look at. So we can get to that on uh, a particular pin of the 2503 IC. Uh, it's on pin 15. So uh, that should be fairly easy to find. Okay, we're set up to look at this signal which should be sat on 12 volt DC and there should be 250 millivolts uh, swing. I think that's what it's trying to tell me and a 40 millisecond period. Well, we're seeing the 12 volts and we're seeing some signal there. Uh, let's, uh, I think we might go to AC coupling. And then we can look for the 250 millivolt signal with a 40 millisecond period. Bit of trouble triggering on it. Well, we seem to have the right period because this is 20 milliseconds per division. From what I can see, that probably is the right waveform. We'll have 20 milliseconds between these two markers. And they're showing, I think, two oscillations in 40. So I believe we have the correct frequency, but do we have the correct content within it? A little bit hard to tell. So this signal is FM2, so it's the output from the heads, effectively, uh, which does appear as a band of FM signal like that on video recorder normally, but you'd normally see dips in it where you're going between the heads, especially if you're in picture search. And we're just sort of seeing a band of noise, I'm not really seeing any proper signal in that. What do you think? Do you think that's normal for a V2000 FM uh, output from the heads? What I'm trying to... <clears throat> what I'm trying to work out is whether the signal here on pin 3... Sorry, try again. What I'm trying to work out here is whether the signal on pin 2 of the 7151 is correct. Uh, it should be about 250 millivolts, which it appears to be, of FM signal from the heads. And I just don't know if that's valid or not. But it looks like it might be. And if I hit stop, it should turn to rubbish, which it does. And then press play. It's just getting this large, small, large, small thing, which seems to happen even when I hit stop. 
Not sure what that is. Maybe main tum. Yeah, so I think that is a valid FM signal. Going into pin two here. The whether the uh, filtering is correct, well, you'd never know. Right, this machine has a service mode, and I think that's going to be extremely helpful. So you can bring the DTF microcontroller on this panel into service mode as follows. Disconnect mains voltage, connect pin 21 of the microcontroller on the front board to 26, which is 5 volts. Then power it up, um, and then remove that connection. Well, rather than mucking about with that connection, what I've done is I've soldered wires to those pins on the front panel here, so I can make the connection and break the connection. Uh, and then you press the tape counter, and it'll go into the DTF test mode and put out a sawtooth, um, which you can pick up on an oscilloscope. But that's a very high voltage, unlimited sawtooth. And though it doesn't specifically say so in the instructions, I think it would be a very good idea to disconnect the uh, actuator connection to the head drum whilst in that test mode. I'm really surprised it doesn't seem to say that. So I'm going to look for this test signal, which is going to be 250 volt almost, uh, I think, peak to peak. So it's going to be one heck of a signal, uh, which I should be able to detect on my oscilloscope. Um, Hopefully that will be safe. I'm beginning to wonder, actually. Just realised I've hit a problem. My oscilloscope here uh, says 5 volts RMS input signal maximum. Got a divide by 10 probe, so I can take 50 volts safely. But this is 250 volts. So I'm going to have to find another way to do that. It says that uh, to bring the service program on the DTF microprocessor and in fact all of the ones on the machine I think you actually need to bridge uh, a contact on the front panel so you connect pin 21 to 26 26 is the supply on the microcomputer 7050 slightly worrying on this is that on the schematic it's marked 7051 but I'm going to have to assume that it still applies. When you so what you do is power the machine up with this connection made. I've put a switch in to make it easier. Then let go, and it will now be in the general service mode. And I think the way we'll tell is that all the lights should light up. Then you press the tape counter reset button. This one, and you can then it will generate a ramp on the DTF output. Uh, it's 250 volt peak to peak ramp. Now, I have a times, or divide by 10 if you like, but a times 10 probe on my oscilloscope. But the oscilloscope's maximum input voltage is 5 volts, which means 50 volt peak to peak maximum. So I've set up a little set of resistors here. There's two 4.7 megs and a 1 meg to give me an approximately divide by 10 uh, attenuator here. It doesn't matter if it's not exactly divide by 10. Close enough that I'll be able to, that, that swing will be safe enough to then show on the oscilloscope. So if this works, it tests and eliminates the DAC and all the following electronics, uh, including the 7051 that I've already changed, and to some extent, I suppose, the micro as well, the, the main microprocessor there, the DTF one. I suppose it doesn't completely eliminate it, but mostly. So if all that works, if I get this ramp, and I think I will, then we know we're looking at a problem with either the input or some other problem with the actuators the signals to the actuators on the head. But this is a major piece of uh, electronics to test in one go. So I'll move the machine around a little. This is a very major test. It tests a lot of electronics and eliminates it. I think we will see the 250 volt ramp provided 
we do get into the test mode. Right, uh, I'll set you up so you can see the oscilloscope and the machine and uh, let's go for it. So it's 250 volt signal there and we're effectively dividing it by 100 roughly. So I should see uh, 2.5 volt on the oscilloscope. So I'll set it up with roughly the right settings to see that. Strangely, I'm getting a waveform now, which is presumably mains hum. I think I've managed to remove that. So we're set up with roughly the right settings that I should get this signal. So I set this to 500 millivolts per division, so I should get about four or five divisions on there. So the uh, first thing to do is to see if we can get into the power up in, power up in this uh, test mode. So I'm going to hold this short button in and power up. And if it's worked, I think all the machine lights will come on. No. Well, it's got 8888 there, so maybe it has. Press reset. I'm getting weird things going on here. I don't believe that's working. I don't think it went into the test mode. I'll try it without the button, just make sure everything's working. Yes. Was that maybe not the correct uh, buttons I connected together? Well, I'm not getting the ramp. Is there any other way I can detect if I have it in test mode? When an error occurs, its code appears on the second LED of the display. Let's see if we can prove that that's true. It says 70 a6, where A is not used apparently. That's not the second segment, that's a... I don't know if this is in test mode or not. And if you can see the display, all kinds of weird things are going on here. Seven O A six it says. Press play. I think it is in a test mode. I just don't know what the display is trying to tell me. So that being the case, pressing this button here should put it into the uh, DAC test mode. So either I'm not successfully in a test mode and Judging by the display there, I think I probably am. Or uh, the waveform is missing completely, which is entirely possible. I think I'll uh, look at, see if we can see the uh, input to the drivers from the DAC. Okay, so what I'm gonna try and do is put it into the uh, DAC test mode and look at pins 14 and 15 on the output of the the 4051 which drives the amplifiers so I have to remember to hold this button power it up comes up with all eights on the display press to counter reset and then look at pin 15 but it doesn't look like a ramp does it it just looks like a pile of noise And pin 14. We're not getting the ramp that we should get in this test mode. I'll just go through that sequence again. Pins 14 and 15 are just giving us noise. So that's telling us that either the DAC chip, TDA 1462, or the micro that's before it, 
DTF Micro is at fault, neither of which are obtainable. So it would seem that we are stuck permanently because either the processor, the AT49, and note that the other machine, the portable, has a different one, it's an AT48 in there, or the DAC, which uh, is a, well, the one that's actually on the board is a TDA2502, but on the schematics it shows there's a different product part again, and the one that's in here is a different part again. One of those parts, it would seem, is defective. Unless we've failed to go into the service mode that we think we have, I think we can safely say that uh, we need parts. If somebody has a scrap one of these machines, either an entire one or just the panels, please let me know. Otherwise, I think we've come to a sticky end, at least for now. Do please come by and watch me work on some other equipment. I'm really looking forward to work on the Super Beta and we've got other things to come in and play with shortly. Bye for now.